in here before not an unfamiliar face of course is an integral part as far as continental soccer is concerned Brian Wesala a uh, football entrepreneur and also the founder and CEO for Business Foundation for Africa good to join us how are you doing I'm doing well, Maxwell. Thank you very much for, for having me today. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a while. I think last time I was here was... Uh, last several months several down the months, line, right? Yeah. And uh, I saw during the midweek you organized something brilliant. Uh, the inaugural uh, business football summit that took place at a Nairobi hotel, bringing together several you know, dignitaries led by Anthony Bafo, a man I enjoyed watching during his prime days featuring for the Black Stars of Ghana, right? Yeah, Black Stars. And of course he's... Actively involved in, you know, consultants and operations at uh, FIFA as well. Uh, what informed this idea? First of all, tell us what it entailed. Uh, the Africa Football Business Summit was uh, basically trying to bring together uh, football industry stakeholders, so from government, uh, private sector, and of course the football people ourselves, and uh, try to kind of uh, to chart an, uh, a way forward for football on the continent because uh, we realize uh, as much as. Uh, uh, Africa is always praised for the talent and the passion. We have not done much when it comes to the development of the industry uh, in Africa. And that was uh, the idea behind uh, organizing this inaugural Africa Football Business Summit. And you brought, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, concerned with the sports. I saw the likes of, you know, Bonfa Sambani, Cynthia Mumbo, who is a policy shaper. And uh, was it embraced by those who attended? Yeah, I think the, the reception was very good. The feedback that we have got from uh, those who attended was uh, very, very positive. Uh, people say they need more platforms like this. As you mentioned, we had some uh, key people from the industry, uh, football legends. Apart from Ambani, I think we also had um, uh, Alan Wanga there. We had a couple of uh, KPL um, uh, CEOs. We had people running uh, some academies. Um, people from the private sector. So these kind of platforms are really needed in Africa, where people can network, where people can learn, where people can um, hatch uh, collaboration uh, uh, initiatives, so that we build the whole ecosystem. You know, in Africa, we're always talking about uh, football development, football development, and it's mainly geared towards developing players for sale, be it within our clubs or usually to sell players abroad. But um, when you look um, at the industry more critically, you realize there's a role for different stakeholders that we haven't, we haven't highlighted. We haven't thought about it as an ecosystem. We always think about it as a pipeline. I'm developing players, I want to sell them. But when you talk about sponsorship, what does it, what does it mean when it comes to a, a football space? Even you people in media, as much as you're playing your role, but do the other un, uh, stakeholders understand the role of media in developing the business? of football. So that, that was the idea behind uh, the summit and this was very well received. I think people learned a lot, people made new connections, which we now hope will um, feed into the development of the industry. And talking about ecosystem, you're reminding me about a friend of mine who was talking to me and he was saying that in Kenya we need a sports CS who understand sports ecosystem and you know, because sports nowadays does not revolve around, you know, playing and scoring goals and it goes beyond that because there has to be that commercial aspect of the game you have to understand because football as we speak right now it's a, a, a global employer and generating revenue and talking about ecosystem how has it been like in terms of your uh, pursuit of you know the continent trying to market the popular game and popular discipline and you know how you know beyond Kenyan borders, how it's being treated? Um, so as you realize, first of all, uh, I think when I was last year, this event was supposed to happen in Kigali. Yes. And one. Uh, this was just, uh, it's more of also to bring that Pan-African feel around, around football, around sports, um, which I believe is critical because um, as Africa, we have not had the opportunity to really determine what we want to do with football. It's a very Eurocentric sport. A lot of what happens when it comes to the business of sports is dictated from Europe because that's where we have the two biggest um, uh, football organizations, that being uh, FIFA and secondly uh, UEFA. Uh, but Africa is a very, uh, forms a very big part of the football industry with 54 member associations. I think it's the second biggest uh, um, um, following, uh, following Europe. But 
we don't understand the ecosystem. If you look at Europe, for example, they have their brands which have invested themselves in football. They have also created um, what you call like uh, the knowledge or the think tanks that continue to push um, education into the development of, uh, of the industry, which is something we have not done in Africa. And it's simply because the industry has been very Eurocentric. So by bringing these conversations here, we also hope to spark dif uh, interest in different um, sectors. Our universities, are they developing the right knowledge for our industry? How many sports management courses do we have, for example, uh, in Africa? I, w I was surprised that a university like uh, Masinde Moliro has some sports-oriented courses, but does the industry know about these courses and are we tapping into that space? So that's, that's the idea of ecosystem and trying to bring the different players together. It's not just being in football. You know, as football people, our we our, I think our biggest weakness sometimes is we tend to only stick within our, our silos. I think you were talking earlier in the, in the, in the previous um, uh, segment and say KPL CEOs met. Um, it's <laughs> always KPL coaches or coaches have met. But where do we find a platform where we have the KPL CEOs, yes, we have the coaches, but then we have government officials, we have people coming from academia, we have the private sector coming in and discussing how is the industry operating, how is it working, where is it not working and what uh, can we do. So that's, 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 that's where we need to push the agenda and also to bring in people from different parts of the continent because you find um, in Africa it's very diverse. But at the same time, we find we struggle with the same things in different uh, parts of Africa. So we can learn from each other. If some problem has been solved in Ghana, maybe the, sol the same solution can be used in Kenya. But if we don't meet the people from Ghana in such platforms, how do we get to know? We waste a lot of resources solving problems that have already been solved anywhere. So it's high time we took a very collaborative approach to the development of the football industry in Africa. How about we listen in to the man who graced the occasion, and of course uh, that is Anthony Bafo, the African football legend having played for Black Stars of Ghana some time back and now working with World Football Governing Body FIFA, and he presided over the exercise that took place in the midweek. Let's listen in to him speaking at the event and uh, uh, what he had to share with those who attended the forum. So now we have started, and let the finishing take a long time, and let other generations also be impacted on what you are de doing. We need young, hungry, intelligent gentlemen like Brian to take African football to a different level. I can only tell you, keep going, keep going, keep going. All these people here have interest in you, have interest in African football, so Kenyan football. We want Kenya football also to move uh, to the other level. I've seen legends here, I've representatives from the players' unions as well. I'm always happy when I see the active um, stakeholders, like the players being involved. Guys in studio led by John Vaslin and Robert Osora are almost making us to digress from whatever we're speaking about following the, you know, uh, interview. Excerpt from Anthony Bafo who presided over the exercise during the midweek of, you know, African Football Business Summit, the inaugural edition that happened at a Nairobi hotel being organized by, you know, Brian Wesela who is joining us this particular afternoon. Now, Bafo graced the occasion. I saw the likes of... You know, uh, Alan Wanga and Bonfa Zambani, just like you indicated, also featured prominently for local club and even national team Arambe Stars. And you also invited uh, several stakeholders, media sponsors. And uh, how, how was it like, you know, before speaking to those who attended the forum? Um, I think uh, Anthony Bafo is... Uh... Why did you settle on him in the first place? <laughs> Um, it, it, it was uh, it's not it, it was not uh, me who, who, who chose Baso by the way, uh, but um, he was recommended by by FIFA since he's currently consulting by, with the with the with the world governing body and the talent development uh, scheme, which uh, I hope will soon be in Kenya once uh, we we sort out uh, uh, our issues here. 
But uh, I must say I really appreciated Bafo as a person. I think he's one of the uh, inspirational people we have on the continent whose, um, whose profile, both as a player and also as a football administrator, sports management uh, personality should really be put to the fore. He played for, he played for Ghana but has transitioned well into, government, uh, into, into the management side of the game. He's the founder of the uh, professional, uh, Ghana Professional uh, Players Association. He's a former Deputy uh, Secretary General at CAF. So a wealth of experience, but uh, still somebody who is uh, very humble and uh, very willing to support uh, upcoming talent, both on the pitch and off uh, the pitch in, in terms of uh, inspiring. So you listen to him speak and you realize this is the kind of leadership we need in the football industry in Africa. And um, I hope we can have more uh, uh, legends like um, uh, like uh, like Bafo. I think as, as well early in the segment you're talking about the struggle a lot of players have uh, transitioning from their playing days um, uh, into real life, if I can put it uh, that way. So he's one of those who has made a very good uh, transition in terms of packaging himself as somebody who is leading the industry. We see a lot of our, um, of our legends here, for example, struggling um, after their careers are, are, are over. So what, they, what can they do to make, this, uh, to make this better? I think people like Anthony Bafo should be uh, emulated uh, in, uh, in many respects uh, for their contribution uh, to the industry uh, beyond the pitch. You've talked about a critical point where we've seen several former players languishing in poverty because probably they never opted for an alternative besides, you know, playing football and saying that now they should draw a lot of inspiration from the likes of Bafo. Are you trying to insinuate that, you know, uh, even the current crop of active players featuring for uh, KPL and even overseas clubs, even the likes of Victor Wanyama and Michael Engineer Olunga, upon retirement they should have something else uh, they should be doing, uh, even if it's punditry, consultancy, amongst others? Um, I think I've said this previously on the, on the show. For me, football is just a tool. And it's a tool that you have for a very short time. And um, despite this, you know, we play to different levels. You know, there are those who will go up to the way the European leagues, where it pays uh, very well. But uh, imagine our professional year in Kenya, uh, for example. It's, it's not really sustainable for them to depend on a football uh, career. And we have, to, we, are, we have to be honest. And that is why they should really invest in their education, both within the sport and outside. Again, not everybody can be a coach. Not everybody will be a, a club CEO. But uh, we need lawyers, we need marketers, we need media people, like you're saying, to do pandriti and all that. But at the same time, we need to fashion um, our players in a way that they will attract people to invest in the industry. Uh, that we talked about brand ambassadors. As are these players packaging themselves or are we packaging them in a way that they become attractive to the private sector, uh, for example, so that brands want to associate with the game in Kenya or in Africa? I think there is a lot to explore within the football sports space that uh, we have just uh, scratched the surface. So a lot of work uh, lays ahead and uh, I believe we are cut out for it. Of course, with Salah's comments bringing us to that point where Babu Namamba nominee for Cabinet Secretary position was speaking regarding, you know, Brand ambassador for Kenya when Naomi Campbell was announced, you know, uh, and the likes of Eliud Kipchoge uh, getting omitted when they suit the position. Of course, that will form the basis of a discussion as the show progresses. Once immediately after we've taken this short commercial break, we will be up next. Don't go away.